Slar here, and today we're back with my second video for this channel, which is a marathon of all the bad Cyber episodes, which I'm going to rate from best to worst. Now, the reason why I say they're bad is because they're kind of not held in high esteem by the Doctor Who community, you know, fan base, whatever you want to call it, and I'm here to defend some of them, and with others go, yeah, you're right, they're actually shit. There's a few which you might think would be on this list but aren't, so I'll just go through why they're not on. One is the moon base. I feel like that's been more appreciated lately. I mean, it was never thought it was a bad episode, just mediocre. I mean, I love it, but pe people have come to, uh, you know, see that it's actually quite a good episode, I think. So, um, that's not on here. And also the next Doctor, for one, it's a Christmas special. The Christmas specials are never good. I'd just be beating a dead horse, really, going on about that. And also, people consider it one of the better Christmas specials, so, so do I, to be honest. I mean, I don't really like any of the Christmas specials, but if I had to watch one of the Christmas specials, it would probably be The Next Doctor, so I'm going to let that one slide. But all the other episodes that should be on here are on here. All right, so let's start. So the best of the bad Cyber episodes, I think, is The Wheel in Space. And just, who thinks this is bad? I don't get it. I think it's suffering from enemy of the world syndrome. As you remember, people used to think, oh yeah, that's just crap. But then, when they actually found the episodes, people were like, oh, okay, this is actually good. And I think the same things happened to the wheel in space, because, I mean, two of the episodes we have in the BBC archives, but the rest you have to watch through reconstructions, and I really, really enjoyed it. Like, it was a cracking episode. It's probably still the worst of the 60s Sidemen stories, but they're like, that's the best Sidemen stories out of all of them. So, you know, that's not really a bad thing. Well, yeah, but and it's really good. It's kind of got a good atmosphere. It's by David Whittaker. He's written some really good stuff. I mean, he wrote Enemy of the World, also wrote Power of the Daleks, Evil of the Daleks, and he also written The Edge of Destruction, which I'm not a fan of. He also written The Crusade. I, I, I'm not too keen on that either, but then I haven't watched that in years, I should probably go back and watch that. But anyway, The Wheel in Space is excellent. It has one flaw, which kind of, you know, stops it from being really, really good, which is the fact that it's paced really, really badly. Like, it all, it all feels like build-up. Like, there's parts in the story where you think it's, you know, it, where you can tell it's meant to be action, you know, it's meant to be the story finally coming up and with all, like, shit going down, the climax, etc. But it still feels like build-up. I don't know why. It's it's just the way it was filmed, the way it was written. It, it just doesn't quite work in the way I think it was intended to. But still, it's a very good episode, and I don't think anybody should consider it bad. Well, of course, it's your opinion, but I think most people who consider it bad probably haven't seen it, or have only seen the two episodes which have been found. And out of context, you know, it's they're not actually very good. Now, the next story on here is Attack of the Cybermen. Now, this one's more of a split opinion kind of thing. Some people think, oh yeah, it's bad. Some people are like, oh no, it's not bad. I consider it the trash compactor story for the Cybermen, because if you're familiar with that term, it's because of um, the planet of the Daleks. That's considered the trash compactor Dalek story, because it's got like all of the elements from previous stories just mashed together. And that's what Attack of the Cybermen's like. You know, it's got, I'm trying to save Mondas from the 10th planet. It's got them in the sewers, like in the invasion. It's got tombs from Tomb of the Cybermen and Telos from Tomb of the Cybermen. You know, and then it's got like, uh, you know, Earthshock Cybermen with David Banks. It's the Trash Compactor Cyberman story, and it's actually pretty good. It's not perfect. I did notice a few plot holes, but it's not meant to be a story that you take uber seriously. It's just something that you sit back and enjoy. It's one of those stories which, you know, you just kind of watch very casually, like with most classic Doctor Who, you actually have to pay attention to it. With New Who, I, found, I find you can like do something else while watching it, and that's one classic story which is like that, where you don't have to pay your full attention to it, uh, because it's a bit simple, really. Actually, it's really complicated, but it's just not complicated in a complicated way, if that makes any sense. It doesn't, but if you've seen Attack of Simon, you'll understand exactly what I mean. So the next one on the list is Revenge of the Cybermen, and um, it's okay, it's pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't consider it bad, but it's certainly on the edge. One thing which it really gets wrong is the Cybermen. 
and in the same way that the new series gets the side men wrong, like they just they seem more like robots than people inside robots, and it's not doesn't really make for compelling watching in comparison to like you know the creepy '60s side men or even the '80s side men were pretty good as well, apart from in Silver Nemesis, which I'll get onto that later. But yeah, Revenge of the Cybermen, it's it's all right. It feels very basic and very generic. And to be honest, I would have expected better of a Hinchcliffe Cyberman episode. Unfortunately, that was the only one Hinchcliffe ever did. Because I reckon if Hinchcliffe did another, he could do it really well. Because obviously, gothic horror and like body parts, you know, run by robots, he, he could have done that really well. But unfortunately, didn't work out. But then I guess there were so many good episodes that season. I, I can't really complain. But still, it, it's it's okay. It's watchable. It's just nothing amazing, particularly. Alright, so the next one on here is Nightmare and Silver, which I bet a lot of you thought might be lower down. But I don't actually mind this episode. I mean, it's I'd say it just about lands on bad. But it's more closer to mediocre, to be honest. It wasn't that bad. It was fairly enjoyable. Again, I had the same problem as Revenge of the Cybermen, like I said, that the new series are like... The Cybermen, I didn't feel like they were, you know, humans made out of, uh, you know, robots with human parts inside them. They were just, they just seemed like robots. I mean, obviously, things like, you know, the Cyber Planet, the weird circus guy, you know, they, they look like it, but then they weren't actually, you know, fully converted Cybermen. And there's a few things which are wrong with this episode. One is the fucking children. I hate them. I hate, I mean, Doctor Who's never really done children well, but definitely in this, it, it, I mean, I didn't mind the boy so much, but the girl was such a whiny little bitch, constantly. Fortunately, they had the sense to have them incapacitated for about 80% of the episode, so that was good, and didn't have to hear them whining, uh, but still, it was a bad choice to have them in there. And also the other thing which he gets wrong, which is really annoying, is the fucking cyber planet, or as he likes to call himself, Mr. Clever. You can see the huge glaring mistake already, and I haven't even talked about them. They're Cybermen. They don't have emotions. They would not call themselves something like Mr. Clever. I know it's invaded Matt Smith's brain, but it's still the cyber planet. Have you seen the cyber planet in Wheel of Space? It, it, it's, a, it's the cyber planet. It does not have emotions. It does not call itself Mr. Clever doesn't work. It just makes me want to puke over the carcass of a roadkill cat. It's horrible. But aside from that, the episode worked well. I like the, It brought back the base under siege kind of aspect, which you hadn't seen in quite a long time in Doctor Who uh, at that point. Probably not since like Peter Davis in the year. I don't know. I, I haven't really thought that through. Uh, but yeah, and Another thing that they got right is the Cybermen constantly upgrading themselves. I thought that was a really cool idea. How they would just, you know, they'd face a problem, they get killed by it, and be like, oh, we'll just upgrade ourselves, and now we can survive it. And that was a cool idea. Uh, I doubt they'll keep it up, and they certainly didn't in the next Cybermen episode, which, oh, I forgot to say, that one isn't on this list either, because, I don't know, I think it's a bit too recent, Death in Heaven, slash Dark Water, uh, it's too recent, really. I couldn't be asked to rewatch it, and uh, plus the side men don't really do anything in it. They're just Missy's bitch. But I'm not going to talk about that episode. We're, we're leaving that alone for a day. Yeah. In truth, I actually forgot that that was a side man episode. Like I forgot to watch that. But, but anyway, aside from that, Nightmare and Sylvie, It's it's about bad, but it's watchable. It's watchable. And the next one on this list, the second worst Cyberman episode, Sylvie fucking Nemesis. <sighs> this was meant to be the 25th anniversary for Doctor Who. It, it was terrible. For one, it had too many, like, subplots and people going after the Nemesis statue. I mean, it had the Cybermen, had Lady Pentfort was her name, I, I, I don't even remember, nor care, had the Nazis... You know, there's just too many groups going after this one one statue. And the Nazis, I mean, it would be fine either having three groups, but it's just the fact that the Nazis kind of are in it and then just disappear. Like, there's no point to them. 
And also the side men are really, really weak in this story. I mean like, you know how in gold, in like Earthshock, in Revenge of the Simon, it would kind of weaken them, but wouldn't quite kill them. Well actually no, it did kill them in Revenge of the Simon, but in Earthshock definitely, it would weaken them. Yeah, well in this, a fucking gold arrow to the chest unit kills them. Like seriously. It's ridiculous, there's two people with gold bow and arrows. Imagine, a f you know, fend off an entire platoon of Cybermen, and it makes them look stupid. Absolutely stupid. And there's one point where there's like a Cyberman with, a Cyberman with like a detecting, and he's going up towards a golden arrow, um, you know, saying, oh, it's gold, and then tells everybody to get back, be careful, just in case one of them trips over and impales themselves on us. It's just like, no, that's stupid. Oh, so nemesis. It's not well written. It's got a crap story. Uh, it's not interesting in the slightest. I would not recommend watching it. It's, it's, it makes me sad. But there's one thing which makes me more sad. It's closing time. The Matt Smith story from season six. I'm, it really does make me so sad that the Cybermen sunk to that level at one point. Well, well, let's go through it. For one, it's meant to be a Cybermen story. How many Cybermen do we get? Not many. Not many at all. All we get is fucking Craig, that character from The Lodger, which I don't care about. I know some people might care about him, but... You know, I was more interested in seeing the Cybermen in action. You know, and I can understand if they want to get Craig back, you know, for the people who actually enjoy them, but it's just the fact that he'd taken over most of the episode. Most of the episode was about him, and not the actual problem you know, of the Cybermen in the department store. But Cybermen in the department store, that, that just seems like a stupid idea. It sounds like something that is, when I was six, I'm like, oh boy, Cybermen in the department store, that sounds fun. Like when I was being dragged around, I don't know, fucking John Lewis, uh, being like, oh, I'm bored, imagine there was a Cyberman coming out of there. That would have been great, but I wouldn't even know what Cyberman was when I was six, because it only came back, uh, you know, and Simon went in season one. Unless you count that cameo and Dalek, but I wouldn't have understood the reference at six, funnily enough. Uh, but anyway, yeah, and but the thing which really gets me about this episode, the thing which really just kills this episode, which makes it the worst, is how they resolve Craig becoming Simon. So basically, there's a point in the episode near the end where Craig is captured by the Cyberman, and he's converted, the mask goes down, he is a Cyberman. Usually, in any of a Cyberman story, once that's there, there's no going back. You're a Cyberman now. But because he hears his sweet little cherub crying outside, all of a sudden he's unconverted and comes out the Cyberman suit absolutely fine just because he heard his baby crying. And it's just like, Cyberman were defeated by the power of love. Are you kidding me? Like, that that's a crap ending. Nobody likes those endings. Everybody thinks they're shit. Even casual viewers thinks they're shit. Nobody. There must. I mean, there's probably one person who thinks, "Oh, great ending." I hate it. It really just made the Cybermen look like fucking jokes. That a baby crying can resolve being converted by a Cyberman. And I will never forgive that episode for that. I mean, sure, you could say Silver Nemesis was worse than Closing Time. But it doesn't make me anywhere near as angry as Closing Time. Like, Closing Time is just so much worse. I hate it. I just completely despise it. It can go die. And, well, The Silver Nemesis, it's a bad episode. It's got its place, you know. But Closing Time does not have its place. It just doesn't deserve to be in Doctor Who. I despise it. And never watch it. If you haven't seen Closing Time, don't. You don't want to see it. Don't want to see some analysis either, but the rest of them, well, it's just not bad watch to be honest. But yeah, so that's it for this video. So before we end, I'll show my recommended episode of the week, which is going to be a regular feature in my videos. And this week, with the Cyberman theme, it's Tomb of the Cyberman. And just, I love this episode. I love it so much. It's one of those stories which you can just watch so many times and never get bored of it. I mean, I must have watched this, like, over 20 times or something. Like, it's ridiculous. <laughs> this is probably my most watched story, I don't think, about us. It's a great story. And the Cybermen are done really well. And there's just this kind of awe about it. This aura that it sends off, which... Just a magic, almost. Which isn't really recaptured by many other stories.
I mean, sure, it isn't like, you know, from a, you know, how would this describe this, like, objective point of view, the best thing ever, but if you're a, you know, Doctor Who fan, it, it's just magical, and I love it. So, next week's episode, not sure what I'm going to be doing, might be a top five, might be an episode comparison, something like that, I'll, I'll decide closer to the time. Well, thanks for watching, and I'll see you back next time in another video.